How to SSH from Jenkins to a remote server. Typically, when you need to operate over SSH to a remote server, you might just connect that server up as an agent against your Jenkins controller. However, you might not want to do that, but you still need to be able to operate on that server. We'll look at one way to do that in this video. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.426.3. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent. Now, the way that we're going to be making our connection from Jenkins over to our remote server is by using a pipeline step from the SSH pipeline steps plugin. If you've not installed this plugin before, let's go ahead and go over to our Jenkins controller, manage Jenkins. We'll go to plugins and let's go ahead and double check that the SSH steps plugin has been installed. So we'll say SSH steps. Now, if you're wanting to follow along and do all the steps with this video, if this plugin isn't installed, you'll need to go do that first and then continue on with the video. Since I have this plugin installed, let's go back to the documentation. Once it's set up, what we'll notice here at the top of the documentation is this concept of a remote. So when we're building out our pipeline, we're gonna to have to give our job the information about the remote server. What we can see here is that the name, the host, and user are all mandatory. Even though we may see some other mandatories, they're sort of if-then type scenarios. But from our basic information, we need to have name, host, user, and in our case, we're gonna be using a password. If we go ahead and scroll down some more, what we'll see here is that there are a handful of different steps. There's SSH command, there's also SSH script, and a few others. What we're gonna be running in this example is SSH command. Let's go ahead and take a look at the example for SSH command. What I was saying before, we will set up a variable for remote. We'll set up name, host, user, and our password. We're gonna allow any hosts, just to make the example simple. In the best case scenario, you wouldn't allow any host. You would require known hosts. But again, for this example, to keep it simple, we're gonna set that to true. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our SSH command. We're going to connect via the remote, and then the command that we're gonna run on that remote server, which isn't our agent, we're just gonna run ls. Now, one other thing I've already done to get ready for this connection is I'm gonna go ahead and go back into dashboard, manage Jenkins. Let's take a look at credentials. I've already set up the credentials. I'm connecting to a Raspberry Pi and I've already set up the credentials for the Pi within my controller. So I'll be able to reference this credential from my pipeline. Let's go ahead and go back in. Let's create a new item called remote. We'll select pipeline, click okay. Let's go ahead and start with the hello world just as our starting point. In the documentation that we were looking at, that was using scripted syntax. Here I'm using declarative syntax, but let me show you how I'm going to make the changes so it still works within declarative syntax. I'm going to go ahead and define my remote map and just set it to empty. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and define the name and the host for this server. Now, in my case, the remote name is Pi. I'm just giving it a name. The name could be anything. I'm calling it Pi. The host is the IP address of that controller. And then I'm defining remote.allowanyhosts to true. Again, I'm using that as a shortcut. In real life, I would be using known hosts. Now, notice I'm not defining a username or password right here. How am I going to get access to those values? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down into my pipeline. I'm going to define an environment variable. I'm going to call it pi underscore creds. And I'm going to use the credentials helper to load in that pi credential that I showed you just a moment ago. That pi credential is a username password type credential. Now I've got access to pi creds. I've got my basic setup for remote, but now I still need to set up the values for the username and for the password. So let's go ahead and go down into steps. Here, in order to set those values on that remote map, I need to set up a script block. In this case, I'm going to type remote.user equals. Now we're within the script block, so I'm accessing the environment variable. So I'll say env.py underscore creds underscore USR. Since the credential for pi is a username password, once I load that up into pi creds, both the username and the password are loaded into pi creds. To break those two apart, there are two helper environment variables that are created along with pi creds. There's one pi creds underscore USR, and there's a pi creds underscore PSW. So if I go ahead and type remote.password, I'll set that equal to env.py underscore creds underscore PSW. So now at this point, 
I have all the values that I need to make that remote connection from Jenkins over to that remote server. I have my name, my host, my user, and my password. Let's go ahead and replace this echo with the command that we're going to run. And in this case, I'm saying SSH command, passing in remote and the remote values I've set up. In the command, I'm saying ls-lrt, and then a directory within my Pi server. Now, one thing you might run into when you run this is you may not see the log come back from ls. So what happens is, is the information doesn't make it back before that channel is closed over to that remote server. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up a sleep just to allow enough time for that data to come back over to me. The way I'm going to do that is post always and sleep. And I'm just gonna sleep for five seconds. Now that's a post, since I only have a single stage, I'm putting the post on the full pipeline. Let's go ahead and click on save. And let's go ahead and click on build now. When we take a look at the output of one, we can see that the credentials were loaded up into PyCreds. Since we're sleeping for five seconds, it takes at least five seconds for this to run. We can see we're running the command on this server. We're doing ls lrt home pi documents. We're not using sudo. And then we can see the output from the server. We can see script JS is within the home pi documents. So what we were able to do is the Jenkins controller connected to the agent. The agent then made the remote SSH connection over to my Pi server. Once that completed, the logs were returned back, echoed out within the log file, and then the job completed. Again, SSH command is just one of numerous steps available through the SSH pipeline steps plugin. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.